Hi everybody, I'm Debbie. Hi, I'm Gary. I'm glad that you could join us this Sunday morning. What a fantastic day we have ahead for, for you all. Um, thank you for joining us and please use the YouTube chat late, um, while we're going through the service. It's great to catch up with others and just to see how everybody's doing. Debbie, you've got something lovely to share with us, haven't you? I do, I do. Um, yeah, it's on my way to work. Um, God's been saying quite a few things to me. And, and it is lovely to be able to just um, spend that time with God in, in my car. But um, actually, you know, during lock, lockdown, um, I, as mentioned before, I was on furlough. So I had loads of time to spend with God. And um, I found myself, you know, since going back to work, um, my, I haven't had that much time. Um, anymore, and um, I really felt like God was saying, you know, don't lose that that intimacy with me. Just, um, I really felt like He was saying that, you know, I've got to, we've got to make that time. So, no matter what what is going on in our lives and how busy our lives may may get after after lockdown, and you know, as we move on, um, we must still just bear in mind that we need to put God first in everything because. I know for me that sets a platform for my day and um, I, I read this little thing in um, a book where it talks about inner peace and it says inner peace is like a bicycle's inner tube. You hardly notice when it's working properly. You get very uncomfortable when it isn't mm -hmm. and it has to be repaired from time to time. But if it doesn't get renewed, <coughs> when it gets when it wears out, you won't make any progress at all. And I really felt like, um, you know, spending that time with God gives me that, that inner peace. Yeah, um, but, you know, a tube constantly needs to be filled to maintain the flow and the pressure and the momentum while, you, while it's doing its job on the bike or in the car. It gives mm -hmm. you good handling and good traction and control. And that's what maintaining that tire pressure is. It's like maintaining the filling of the Holy Spirit in your body, you know, mm -hmm. to keep yourself in line, to keep focus, to keep traction, to keep in control and let God control that moment. You know, mm -hmm. and what I've noticed as well is Debbie's been buzzing around like a mosquito lately, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's great. She's really been this mosquito effect around us. <laughs> well... I, I don't bite like one. I hope not, actually. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but actually, um, you know, I just really want us to um, to really focus on being intentional in spending that time with God. And, and there was a little quote I read, which I think is brilliant. It says that I want to be so filled with God that when even if a mosquito does bite me, that it'll fly away saying there's power in the blood. <laughs> I just really yeah. love that, and um, yeah, that, I, I do want that. I just want um, the love of God to just ooze out, out of me in, you know, not in what I say or what um, necessarily, but just in who I am, that people will see God in me. Absolutely. And um, so, yeah, just be encouraged, and I hope that, you know, that, that God will speak to you through that as well. Um, but, yeah, let's be intentional, pe you know, people. Let's, let, let's put God first, and and move forward um, in Him. So, yeah. we're about now to go into some worship from the worship team. Yeah. Enjoy. So, yeah, as we go into some worship, we're going to join the worship team. And following that, we're going to join Ian and Louise um, with the New Life Kids slot for the kids. So, we'll see you later. See ya.
In shopping and he asked me if I needed anything I hope he's remembered everything I needed a map for when I go on holiday to Skegness some fruit jellies for my journey yum yum I'll enjoy those I also wanted a white skirt to wear when I go out later and a meat pie for my dinner tonight ah Here's Mickey now. Hi Rosie. Hi Mickey. Oh, Thank you oh. for getting my shopping. Did you manage to get everything? Yeah, I've got all the things he wanted. Here, start with this. There you go. Uh, oh, I love that it suits you Rosie. Mickey? Yes? What's this? Well, it's the cap that you asked for. It don't even fit. Um, I didn't ask for a cat. Yes, you did. Oh, no. I asked you for a map. No, you said, can I have a cap for when I go to Skiggy Vegas? So, I got you a cap. No, Mickey. A map. Oh. I didn't think you were listening. You were too busy playing on your silly computer games. Oh, sorry, Rosie. Oh. Well, at least I got you some of the other things on your list. Hold on. There you go. Some wellies. Mickey? Yes? I didn't ask for wellies. Yes, you I did. asked for jellies. Fruit jellies. How am I supposed to eat these? Well, hold on. Mm. Mickey? Mm, they're rubbery. Mm. Yeah, you can't eat them. They're really there for your feet. Oh. oh, okay. Well, at least I got some things. Hold on, let me go get your... Hang on, where is it? Oh, there we go. Your shirt. Oh, it's very nice. I like it. Look, suits you. Yes. Um, Mickey? Yes? I didn't ask for a shirt. Yes, you did. You said... Hold on, I, you got you rubbed the bit as well. Hold on. There you go, you said I want a shirt and look at that, a nice neat tie. See, you said a shirt and a neat tie. There you go. Now, Mickey. Yes? I wanted a white skirt oh. and a meat pie. Oh, um, that makes more sense, but okay. Um, I got it wrong again. Oh. I mean, you don't normally wear things like that. That's what I wear. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted the skirt to wear when I go out later. Mm. And the meat pie was for my dinner. Okay. I can't eat a tie. Oh, Mickey, what a waste of money. You really do have to listen carefully when someone gives you instructions. Okay. You need to learn how to listen and listen to learn. What? Learn how to listen and listen to learn. What does that mean? Sometimes when you listen, you learn. Mm -hmm. At church, we were talking about listening to God. Mm -hmm. Andy said it's good to take time to listen to God. Stop everything else we are doing. And sometimes God speaks to us. And we can learn more about him. Oh, I'm not very good at listening. 
Especially if that means I need to stop my computer games. I normally just listen to Sonic and Mario, but I'll give it a go. I've never heard God talking to me. Ah, uh, but maybe he has. But in a way you were not expecting. Like when you suddenly think of a person who needs some help from God. And you might say a little prayer for them. Um, yeah, that has happened. I did that for my neighbour. She needed my prayer and my help. That's great. Well, that was God giving you a little nudge. Okay. Or God might speak to you through a story in the Bible and show you how to be more like him and show you which way to go in life. Well, you mean a bit like the map you needed? That can show you the way to go as well. Yes, Mickey. God may also speak to you through the words of a song or the words of a friend. Or we may even hear the voice of God speaking directly to us. God really can speak to us in so many ways. We just need to listen. Yeah, I never thought of it like that, but you're right. I think sometimes God speaks to me through the words that you say. Oh, I'm going to do a bit more listening. I'm going to clean my ears out. Oh. And, um, you know, God did give us two ears and only one mouth. So maybe we should listen more than we talk. Yes, Mickey, you're probably right. Yeah, well, it makes a change. You're normally right. Okay. Bye. Bye. There was a boy in the Bible called Samuel who didn't live in a house or an apartment. He lived in a huge tent. It was actually a temple called the Tabernacle. He lived there with a priest called Eli. One night they were both sleeping in their rooms when God suddenly spoke, not to Eli, the priest, but to Samuel, the boy. Samuel! Samuel didn't realise it was God speaking to him. He thought that it must be Eli, so he ran to Eli's room. Yes, you called me, said Samuel. I didn't call you, go back to bed, said Eli. That's strange, thought Samuel, as he made his way back to his bed. Maybe I was dreaming. Samuel had no sooner dropped off to sleep again, when suddenly... Samuel! When Samuel woke up, it was definitely Eli this time. So he bounced out of bed and ran to Eli. I'm coming, he called. Samuel, what are you doing? asked Eli. You called me, Samuel answered. I didn't, now get to bed, replied Eli, who was a bit annoyed at having been woken up twice. Samuel went back to bed. He was very confused, but it didn't stop him sleeping, and soon he fell fast asleep again. Samuel! The voice came again. Samuel jumped out of bed and once again went to Eli. Did you call me? he asked. No, I didn't, now get to... Eli paused. I didn't call you. God must be calling you. So when God calls again, sit up and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel went back to bed, and sure enough, the voice came again. Samuel sat up in bed and said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And God gave Samuel a very important message. Samuel listened very carefully because he didn't want to miss any of it. Then he went and told Eli about the message. We need to listen and learn.
Lord, thank you for people who can teach us so many things. I pray that we will learn to listen more. Amen. Thanks, worship team, and thanks Ian and Louise for doing the um, New Life Kids slot that they have been presenting this last couple of weeks. Um, also, if you um, for the New Life Kids TV, please don't forget to log on to that. It's great for the kids to hear lots of stories, songs, and other activities. There are programs available on your on our link. We'd also like to thank those who have been giving continually through this period of lockdown and furlough into the church. It's been really great. And we would really encourage you to continue that if possible. So I'd like to just pray over our tithes and offerings. And um, there should be a link at the bottom of the screen telling you how to and where to access the availability of the details to um, so you can continue your giving. Let's just pray over this now. Father God, we just thank you so much for your generosity through everyone's giving into the church and into the community services that we do as a church. And we just ask, Lord, that you bless what we give and bless that what is given goes into the church, into the areas of need, and that there will see multiplication in these areas of joy, of hope, of life. And we just honor every single person, Lord, that's been blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Um, we've got a few notices. Um, as you know, um, one event, um, which was due to happen um, bank holiday weekend, um, is not, there's going to be no event at the Lincoln Showground this year. However... Um, there will be an online event, which is called One Event Where You Are. So you don't have to worry about um, being in a cold tent and or being rained on. or Lining up at the leaves. <laughs> yeah. So from the comfort of your own home, you can enjoy One Event. Um, so it will be, as I mentioned, online. Um, there is also going to be a separate youth stream, which is called YTH.Revival. So the youth stream will be live from 2 p.m. on Thursday, the 27th of August, and on Friday morning, the 28th of August. Um, now the main event, the one event where you are, will be live from 6 p.m. on Friday, the 28th of August, and, and all through the day on the Saturday, the 29th of August. So we would really want to encourage you to access this event online and come comfort of your own home. Um, speakers include Anne Culver, Tony Miller, Stuart Bull, um, Jared Cooper, Steve Campbell. Um, but there are full details from the One Event um, site. So if you go on to one-event.org.uk, you'll be able to get more information there. Um, those links will also be posted on our social media um, pages. So do have a look there and, um, yeah, and, and, and look and hook up there. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. And we've also got a couple of other things that have um, come to highlight. As so we've got an update from Jeff and Krista Mills in Guatemala. They were missionaries, well, they still are missionaries, that we as a church have been supporting for many years. Jeff and Krista were on the verge of retiring just before a huge volcano erupted in Guatemala two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so they had now decided to stay and continue their mission efforts there in a very needy area. It's, it's been quite challenging, I would imagine, having a volcano erupt in your area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, we honor these, these lovely people. Jeff has put some photos together to show us what they've been up to. And um, so that they'll, their story and they, these photos will come up shortly as well. Yeah. And um, we're also going to hear from Deborah and Ian Blyton. And um, they're going to be telling us what God has been doing in their lives. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's move on and um, see what they all have to say.
Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Deborah, and we thought we'd share with you what it's been like for us and for our children, Jacob, Beatrice and Alice, uh, during lockdown and as lockdown's been eased, what it's been like the last few months really. I uh, work in Lincoln, uh, computer software. Uh, back in March, we all got together and decided that the best thing to do um, would be working from home. So we all got our equipment and went home for it. Been working at home ever since. Um, hasn't made a huge difference to how we worked. Um, regular meetings over the internet, uh, voice meetings, um, chat, text messaging. Um, so everything's carried on as per normal. Um, it saved me quite a lot of time travelling. Um, so that's been put to good use with all that you've arranged. Yeah, so I um, finished school close to everybody apart from the key worker children on March the 18th. And the same week, Jacob was furloughed for about six weeks, wasn't he? Yeah, so um, yeah. And Alice, who works in the construction sort of yeah. site, tool hire. tool hire, she was working three weeks it's on, three free. weeks off. So they were thinning their workforce. So we had all of us at home for the best part of six weeks. So we was able to put that to good use. Um, so like everybody, we've been doing quite a bit in the garden, been able to task you with some jobs after you've finished work, haven't you? So you've made yep. some uh, raised beds for me, so we've made a vegetable patch plot, yep. which is uh, really nice. We've been able to do that. A lot of clearing out. We've done a lot of clearing out after living in our home for... 28 years. 28 years, we've managed to get rid of all the rubbish. Now, those who know Ian really well know that that's been really difficult for him to get rid of a lot of the rubbish, isn't it? That's because my suit isn't really rubbish. <laughs> so, I guess for us, um, we've really found lockdown uh, to be a positive experience for us, haven't we? Um, yeah. And we're really thankful for that. Uh, we know that for lots of people, um, it hasn't been so, um, you know, we've had extended family who've had to shield, so, mm -hmm. you know, we've had been able as much as we can to support them as much as possible, So, and we're thankful that we've been able to do that. Um, and we've been doing every morning, we started this before lockdown, we've been doing uh, Nicky Gumball's Bible in One Year on the app that you get on your phone. So I guess we've kept to a good routine, haven't we, really? That's been the key. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because we've, even though we've been off, um, we've, you've had to get up to go to work. So we've all sort of yeah. got up. So we've been able to do the Nicky Gumball app in the morning, and that's really been helpful for us, hasn't it? We've been able to keep that, um, keep up to date with that. Um, and we really feel... I guess through this, the one thing that we do feel is that we're really thankful for what we've yeah. what we've had, what we've got. Um, we've both been in work. Yeah. The children have both all, all been in work. We've all kept well. We're all safe, and we're really thankful that this has been a you know a positive experience because we know, don't we, that for other people, for lots of people, that. Hasn't been so, hasn't it? Yeah, it's no, been we're, difficult. We're really so we just are really thankful, and I think that's the the sort of like message and the key that we've taken out of this, isn't it? How thankful we are for what we've yeah. got, and not to take things for granted so much as what perhaps we've done in the past. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I hope um, everybody's okay, and we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Jeff and Krista, for um, for sharing, and thank you for letting us, you know, see part of your lives and what's been going on. And um, I just want to encourage everybody to continue to pray for um, Jeff and Krista and the mission field that they're in. Um, it is good to to keep, you know, supporting each other in yeah. prayer and just really lifting each other up in prayer. So you know, do do pray, continue to pray for them, and thank you. Ian and Deborah for for sharing what God's put in, in your hearts as well 
Um, it is lovely just hearing all these stories. You know, when there are some really um, exciting stories, but there's also mm. challenging stories. But the most important is just seeing how people are coming out the other end um, with God helping them out. So, Gary. Yeah, I'd just like to introduce our next worship song from our wonderful MNS worship team, Mark and Susan. <laughs> And then after that, we're going to be um, hearing from our very own Paul Staples, bringing the Word of God in um, Matthew 8, verses 23 to 27. So, yeah, let's just pray. Thanks, Debbie. Would you do that for us? Absolutely. It will be a blessing. So, yeah, Father God, we just thank you for Paul, Lord, and we just thank you for for the message that um, that he's prepared with um, with you guiding him, Lord. And Father, we pray your anointing on him and, and as he speaks to us. And God, we just pray your anointing on the word mm -hmm. and open our ears to hear, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you give each one of us fresh revelation. Um, but Father, speak so we, we may hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all. of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father to you all. for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father you see you are Perfect. 
Reflecting all of you Good morning and uh, welcome to what is Matthew's bedroom um, and I will explain later why I'm in Matthew's bedroom for today but uh, I needed to be somewhere uh, that reminded me of God's goodness and I'll unpack that a bit as we go through today. Um, for those of you who don't know me my name is Paul Staples and I'm one of the leaders at the church and now um, today I'm going to be bringing you something that God's put on my heart about what I've travelled through um, over the last sort of 12 months I just want to unpack that and share that with you as we go through. But before I start, let me sort of start with a declaration um, to remind us all that God is good. Jesus has paid the ultimate price that I and you can be set free. Free from sin, slavery, um, pain, illness. All the price has been paid on the cross by Jesus Christ. And that I, as well as you, have the authority of heaven and the power of heaven within us um, through Holy Spirit that brings revelation and understanding and truth. And it is from this standpoint that I want to start what I have to share with you guys today. So I've titled today, um, Travelling Through the Storm. Um, now it may appear sometimes as I'm talking um, that I'm on a boat and that's because I, in Matthew's room, we have a nursing rocking chair, which is why I move a little bit. Um, but it all goes to part of the boat story, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, but as I was preparing today, I was thinking back over the last 12 months. Now, I know for a lot of you, people have been focusing on the last sort of 19 weeks of lockdown. But I want to take you further back than that. I want to take you back to summer of last year. Um, 
where I went through a period from the summer leading up um, sort of through the autumn to winter last year that was very, very different for me that I hadn't experienced before. And I wanted to look at what I'd learned, what God had told me, um, what I'd experienced and the lessons that I could learn from, from what I'd been through. Now, well before the beginning of COVID-19 and the use of the word unprecedented in every statement that was used, I began what was to be one of those challenging times um, in my life. Um, and this is something I'd never experienced before. One of the reasons it was such a difficult time is that I didn't actually realise that I was actually going in and through a storm. Now, I know that sounds quite odd, um, particularly over this last week, week and a half where we've had uh, amazing thunderstorms across Lincolnshire and across the country and you can't fail to miss the thunder, the lightning and then definitely can't miss the rain, especially if you like us with the conservatory, you can't hear anything but the rain when it starts to, to pour down. Um, but the storm I was entering was not one of overt signs and wasn't because of a catastrophic circumstance. Something major hadn't happened. It wasn't a situation where lots and lots of things had built up that people could see. Um, and it was a quiet and unseen storm that brought confusion, um, separation and fear. Uh, and the worst bit about that is it paralysed me from the inside. It impacted my emotions, it impacted me spiritually and cognitively, the way that my brain worked, um, which is um, quite difficult for someone that um, is usually spends his time in control and leading other people and um, often in front of a classroom, trying people looking to me for direction. Um, but I'm going to come back to, to my story and what I went through. Um, later on but let's start in there in the scriptures now i'm reading matthew 8 23 to 27 this is the passion translation and it's titled jesus calms the storm they all got into a boat and began to cross over to the other side of the lake and jesus exhausted fell asleep suddenly a violent storm developed with waves so high the boat was about to be swamped Yet Jesus continued to sleep soundly. The disciples woke him up saying, Save us, Lord, we're going to die. But Jesus reprimanded them. Why are you gripped with fear? Where is your faith? Then he stood up and rebuked the storm and said, Be still. And instantly it became perfectly calm. The disciples were just astonished by the miracle and said to another who is this man even the wind and waves obey his word so we see in this scripture that it's a story we've, we've heard many many times and i'm not going to reteach you the story but in matthew's gospel we see a story about a storm now depending on the commentaries you read they the same way where it talks about a violent storm could also be translated as an earthquake or a tremor which could have caused waves we've all heard of the tsunamis and things like that um, now the time of the storm was following a period of the disciples following Jesus now they, they didn't not know who Jesus was they would followed him they'd seen him um, perform miracles they'd seen sick people healed and they've been following Jesus around for a little while now um, but Daniel Burnock comments in, in a book that she's got this is the dis, uh, in, in a commentary sorry that the disciples spent a lot of time with Jesus and they saw him perform many miracles. You would think they'd have a lot of faith. They'd seen these things and they they, they should have gone, well, this Jesus can do anything. Um, but in their humanity, in their humanness, um, it became evident that they had more faith in the storm and that it would destroy them than they had in Jesus saving them. And that's a really important thing to remember, is that what they were faced with, they were more fearful of and had more faith in than Jesus who was in the boat. Now we would have expected disciples to have been prepared for the storm, as many of them were seasoned fishermen, they knew these waters, they knew what they were in for, 
uh, the Sea of Galilee is known for sudden ragings and, and, and storms. Um, but the things were happening beyond their control, or so they thought. So it surprised them. They weren't expecting it. Um, they were expecting a journey with Jesus to be peaceful and calm and without any distraction. Now, can I burst that bubble straight away? <laughs> a life with Jesus and following Jesus is not a peaceful, calm life. You will face storms and difficulties. But you won't face them alone, which is the difference. So often in life we expected to be able to cope as a leader and as a teacher. Um, um, but as a leader in the church, I've often felt that people look at me to be untouchable or unaffected by troubles that come my way. Um, and I'm able to say with complete assurance um, that no leader, none of us, um, are unaffected. Um, not even the highest leader or the most well-known theologian doesn't face storms uh, or feel overwhelmed at times. In fact, most pastors I know will openly admit that they struggle with storms that come their way and the weight of pastoring a flock. Um, that's why we need to seek strength from the Lord and trust in him. Um, we, The more you travel through life, the more you realise that Jesus needs to be your rock and your foundation. Um, and you realise that you will go through difficult times. Uh, we are not immune to these. Nobody is. Um, now, looking back at the disciples, we could say that they were only human. And fear is a normal response, which it is. Um, especially being in a difficult storm where you're concerned that your boat is going to sink. And you're not going to survive. Indeed, it's fair to say that until... This is fair to say, sorry, until we realised that Jesus was in the boat and Jesus was fully human as well. So then that takes a bit of a spin on things, doesn't it? That Jesus, who is human, that felt all the emotions that we feel, slept through what this difficult storm was and didn't show any sign of fear. And uh, we are reminded of who Jesus is in Hebrews 2.17. And it says, for this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God. And that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. So we see in scripture that Jesus was fully human. He felt what we feel. He experienced what we feel. He tasted as we taste. He saw what we saw. Um, this was not a, a, a half God, half day, a half man, half deity situation. Jesus was fully man. When they got into the boat, the instructions were quite clear to go to the other side. Jesus has said that they were going to the other side. Um, he didn't say, "Let's go out a little way into the water and wait." Um, this is the sign that they were travelling to somewhere. And what did they, endeavor, they encountered along the way? And whatever they got to, they would pass through it to the other side. Jesus was very clear, we are moving to the other side. And we need to remember in our own journey that we are travelling to where God has prepared for us. We are moving into the things he has prepared and set aside for us. We are going to them. And what we face and what we experience are things that we may travel through. And in Luke we see one day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat and set out. Jesus knew he was on a mission of mercy and that his father was faithful to him. Um, so he went to sleep. He was not worried. He knew he was going to the other side of the lake. It was such a deep sleep that some didn't disturb him, just like in another mission of mercy that we see in the Old Testament. So if we go back to Jonah 1, 5 to 6, we see, but Jonah had gone below deck and he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he can take notice of us and that we will not perish. 
Now, in the story of Jonah, it's interesting that to note that this, as the storm grew and buffeted the boat around, the sailors all cried out to their individual gods, save me, save me. Now, how often have we, in difficult times, faced with storms and troubles and problems, um, called on something that isn't God? It may be our own strength. I can do this. I'll get through this. I'll fix it. Wisdom from books or the internet. Google, can you help me? Um, I only ever found that if, I, if I've got problems, especially health problems, if I Google it, it always turns out that I'm going to die according to Google. Um, but even things like alcohol, addictions, friendships, or just to bury our heads in the sand, anything but calling out to God. Um, now we've got a, a magnet that we have stuck on our fridge downstairs and it says, how big is your pro problem on a scale of naught to God? Um, and it seems quite flippant, but it's serious. How big is your storm? How big is the thing you're going through versus the awesomeness of God our Father? Something to think of. We can so easily rely on our own understanding or that of others uh, and forget to bring everything before God and submit it to him. This nicely brings us back to my own storm. I was doing okay. Well, that's what I told you, if anybody had asked. Um, all was well. I could point you to all the good things in my life. My amazing son and my beautiful wife. I'm just going to pause there. And that's the reason I'm in this room, is that many of you know our story and know that we've waited a long time for Matthew, our son. And I sometimes come into this room to remind me of the goodness of God, his faithfulness, that he said we would journey and we would have a child. And here I am in my child's bedroom, where we spent many hours trying to encourage our son to be quiet and go to sleep. But it is a place of remembrance that God is faithful. Um, and that I myself am now a father, which then brings turmoil and all the worries that fathers have. But being in this place is a peaceful place for me, um, particularly when Matthew's not in here. Um, but just to remember the faithfulness of God and his love and commitment to us. And all the people along the way that have prayed for us and supported us. Um, and people could have asked me and I'd have said I had a good job and I was happy, or well, so I thought. So often there's case, isn't it? And I know we've been away from church buildings and congregations for a while, but we still do it on Zoom meetings. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. And then move on. Now, okay. Now, doesn't that cover a multitude of things? I'm all right. I'm okay. Could be worse. When was the last time someone said, how are you? You said, you know what? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. God is good all the time. And really meant it. And shared that love into the people's lives who are asking you, how are you? Also, be remem remember, if you ask somebody, how are you? Expect to be there for the answer. Don't just walk past them. But I digress. If you'd asked my, asked my wife, um, about 12, 10, 12 months ago, how I was, she'd have answered a little bit differently. He isn't his usual self. I'm starting to get a bit worried. My wife has often been a spiritual compass um, in my life um, and spots things that I can miss or not always see. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is because my wife is more in tune with the Holy Spirit or if it's because I'm a man and I don't see things that are in front of me. Well, just past the end of my nose. Um, but she always seems to be able to just put her hand on my shoulder and say, have you thought of this? Are you sure about this? And she'd seen a change in me. I'd become withdrawn. I lacked focus. And I was drowning in work, all of which I couldn't see. 
I was falling apart emotionally and I had no idea what was happening. The first I knew about it is I got up one morning and got dressed as usual and found myself sat outside in the garden. And Stacy came out of the conservatory and said, what are you doing out here? And do you know what? The response really shocked me. I, I had no idea. I didn't remember going outside. I don't know why I was outside. I was just sat outside. Um, and that was really worrying for me. Um, for a person, like I said before, that doesn't like to be out of control, I found it really concerning. And I was facing, I thought I was facing a psychological breakdown. For which, in reality, I probably was very, very close. I was sinking under the pressure of work, of life, expectations. And I spent months saying yes to more work, helping other people, piling on the pressure, with no thought of myself, and I could manage, and other people were struggling, it was the right thing to do to help them. It was the Christian thing to do, to support my work colleagues, to support other people, take on that work. But I was so, so wrong. I spent too much time doing these things in my own strength, my own understanding, and not being focused on God, asking him what I should do. I was fearing man's response and the expectations of those and not of God. The consequences was a mind that was dancing away and I was losing grip of reality. Luckily the alarm bells had been sounded and I was supported by my wife and my friends, most of all the Holy Spirit, um, to come out of the other side, to travel through that difficult period. Now you may think that's great news, free from the storms, um, that was not the case. Jesus helped me through the storm in preparation for what laid ahead. Remember, Jesus came through this storm only to still have to face the cross. We will all have storms to travel through and wait to bear. But we can bear these weights and go through these storms with his help. I was reminded during this time and the struggles that I went through of a recurring scripture that comes up in our family, which is Matthew eleven twenty eight to 29. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I was in need of rest for my soul. And I found it as soon as I called out for it and let go of all that I was carrying. Jesus was teaching, and, and for me, and, but Jesus was teaching the disciples not to be fearful of what they face, but to be in, in command of it through the power of Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus was a man, yet he calmed the storm. We too have the power and authority given to us through the um, given to us to go through the storm and not to sink we need to remember that we have that power and authority to go through the storm and not to sink remember jesus only calmed the storm to make a point he was happy to sleep through it just as jonah was when jesus rebuked the storm it was the same words used as he commanded demons to flee it was from a position of authority and we have that same authority with us. Now back to my story. I was feeling much better emotionally and psychologically, yet there were new storms on the horizon. And I'm only going to briefly outline these. One claim I've got time and two. It's, it's not all about me. But in December, my granddad had had a fall and ended up spending weeks in hospital, to which he never returned. He passed away in March of this year. And this was the amidst the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and complete change in my work, in my lecture role. Um, well, I started having to work from home. Things were, were all confusing. And then in May, just as I was getting into a rhythm of working from home, I settled, Ill, uh, settled all of Grandad's affairs and things had been sorted. My grandma fell ill and died in a very, very short period of time. Now, I don't tell you these things to feel sorry for me. And but to see God's grace and mercy in, in all of this chaos. 
if I had not passed through the psychological problems and storm last year and stayed there sinking, I would not have coped with what was to come. In fact, I would not have coped with the emotion and psychological strain of working from home with a two-year-old, let alone the loss of two loved ones. I would not have been able to support um, my family and to deal with the things that came along. But I was able to say it was well with my soul, even in the middle of grief and challenges, as I was leaning on God and not on myself. Jim Mayhew writes in a book called How Did Jesus Feel? about why didn't Jesus crack? Why didn't he just run away from the cross, pack his bags, go back to heaven, say it's all too much? Well, we see in Hebrews why he didn't and why we shouldn't either. In Hebrews 12, 2, and this is the Passion Translation, so we look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing what you would be and that you would be his, sorry. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted on the right hand of God. He could see the joy that was to come. Joy comes in the morning. And this is true for Jesus and it's true for you. Whatever storm you're in, whatever challenge you face, look to Jesus. Look to the promises that he will continue the good work he began in you. And his promises are yes and amen. Focus on the joy set before you in Christ and not on the storm. The disciples looked at the storm and thought, this is bigger than me, which was true. What they should have done is look at Jesus and say, my Jesus is bigger than this storm. So fast forward to today, well, tomorrow really, um, I start a new job. I'm really looking forward to it and all that has in store for me. I conducted two funerals and being executor to the estates. I still have my beautiful wife and amazing son, and a new day is dawning for me, as it is for all of us, as his blessings are new every morning. So I would encourage you today to refocus on Jesus, to go back to the truth that is said in Scripture. And if you're watching this today and you don't know who Jesus is, and you're facing difficult times and storms, I would really, really encourage you to reach out um, and to connect um, with the church. There, there'll be information come on the screen through this uh, service to contact us through social media, through the office, to know more about who Jesus is. Let me finish in prayer. Father God, I thank you for your awesomeness, your authority and your power. I thank you that we do not have to face storms and problems alone and that you are with us. I thank you that Jesus paid the ultimate price so that we could be in relationship with you. That you gave us Holy Spirit to give revelation and strength and understanding. And that whatever we face, that if we lean on you and trust in you, you will bring us through that storm into a place of peace, love and understanding. And I pray for each person watching this today, that as they call out to you, they might know your peace in their storm. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a great week. Thanks, Paul. Great service. Great message. And we just thank you for relaying what God put on your heart through these verses that was so important for us to really take a hold of. Yeah, yeah. We just thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, if you want to find out any more, well, if you want to find out some more about salvation or um, about God, um, if you have any questions, please do contact us via the church office. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And, um, yeah, now it's time for grabbing a cup of coffee or tea and joining us in the Zoom lounge. We'd love to have a chat with you and have a bit of um, chit-chat and um, yeah, it'll be lovely. So Gary, you can 
end of in prayer. Yeah, just before I end off in prayer, all the details will be on the screen for you to connect to the um, Zoom lounge and to connect to the church office. There'll be some information there about emails and telephone numbers and that. Right, Father God, we just thank you so much for an amazing day, amazing service brought to us by such an amazing team that serves you so well. And we ask, Lord, that you just bless each and every one of us as we go our ways in the coming week. And Lord, bless our time on the Zoom lounge as well. And we just yeah. ask, Lord, that you pour your hand of favor and peace upon each and every one of us yeah. this coming week. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Amen. We'll see you soon. See ya. Mm -hmm.